Hello my 3D printer peeps. I am sitting here with the very cool all new Creality filament dehydrator. We are going to unbox it and see what it's all about. The first thing you'll notice is how cool the packaging is. Creality has really upped their game in all areas in recent time and the packaging for this dehydrator is just one good example of that. Here on this side, you'll see a cutaway of the dehydrator, allowing you to see inside and even see the circuit board on this thing. Look towards the front and you'll see a photo of the front of the dehydrator. On the other side, you'll see the other side of the dehydrator. So that is really cool. It's a very nice package and it looks really good. Here we are at the top of the machine and it's the very strange name, the Creality Pi Filament Dryer and this unusual saying underneath it, the warm product. I'm thinking something was lost in translation from the intended saying, but in fact this is a warm product, so we'll let them get away with that. On the back side, some very clear marketing material, making it very clear it's a Creality product and part of the Creality ecosystem. Creality has worked hard to make sure they have entrance in the market to fill all the potential needs of a 3D printer owner so that they don't have to look elsewhere to other brands and companies for their equipment. This filament dehydrator is an important step in that process. They have included a few bullet points here talking about having a timer, 360 degree heat, single key push operation for 12 different types of filament, manual temperature control, and of course, real-time humidity sensing. Here on the front, you can see the screen demonstrating all those things. Let's pop that out of the box and have a look at it in person. You can simply slice those stickers or you might be able to get away with completely removing them as I did. The machine looks to be in good shape and it is wrapped up in a protective baggie, which is much appreciated. And peel off the protective screen covering. Inside the dehydrator, you'll find a little manual. Let's just take a moment to acknowledge how beautiful this thing is. Three D printers and three D printer accessories have come a long way in a very short time. Let's have a quick comparison with a few other popular dehydrators. Here we have two other fairly highly regarded, commonly used models. This is the Sunlu S two. Version 2, this is the one that has the fan included, and this is the iBoss. Both iBoss and Sunlu now have multi-filament dryers available, but of course we are right now looking at the single spool dryers. Creality is very good at sitting back, watching the market, trolling internet forums and Facebook groups, interacting with users, and compiling data on features that users want then creating new products incorporating those features. This filament dryer appears to be the result of that process. Here we have the S2. The first S2 had a problem in that there was no fan. Therefore, there was no way to exhaust the humid air from the machine. However, suddenly went ahead and resolved that by creating a new model that looks exactly the same, but has a fan installed. This has the clamshell design, opens up like this, and has 360 degree heat. For those printing from this dehydrator, they also include two rollers on the bottom to keep your filament moving smoothly. And it has a single filament exit so that you may print directly from the box right here on top. I do in fact currently print from this dehydrator on my Creality CR6 Max. Here in the front, one of the things that sets the S2 apart from other dehydrators is the touchscreen. And it also has single touch options where, for example, you can tell it you're dehydrating PLA 
and with a single tap, it will automatically set a timer in the correct temperature. This is a very solid dehydrator, except it does in fact have one problem. It's almost impossible to keep it standing up. The four little legs are very unstable, and you can knock this thing over with ease. Here we have the iBoss dehydrator. This is a fairly solid dehydrator. It's also very straightforward, very simple to use, and very feature limited. There is a simple knob right here which you can turn to PLA, ABS, TPU, PETG, etc. However, since this machine only has a hydrometer, it's almost impossible to tell if this knob is actually affecting the temperature and if it's affecting it accurately. I just tend to turn it up and let it go because I don't feel a whole lot of heat at the lower temperatures. I've never had any problem just turning it up a bunch and using that for my PLA. The iBoss does have a few interesting features. However, it does have an exhaust fan and it doesn't have one but two PLA escapes. One here at the top and one here in the back. I use this on an Ender 5 Plus because I sit it behind the Ender 5 Plus using the straight up escape, allowing my filament to go up into the extruder and then down into the hot end. This is a nice unit for the Ender 5 Plus design. Let's have a quick peek inside the iBoss. You pull this down and open the front. The whole front comes off. I don't love that. You will see a nifty feature. This is a compartment where you can put a desiccant pack. And here is the heating element. It is not fancy. It is simply a small heating element with a fan. There is no 360 degree heat, just this little heating element. It is rather limited. However, I've had no issues using this to print from. I do think it helps, but I'm not certain if I have extremely wet filament that this simple heating design is going to be sufficient to save me. That leaves us with the Creality Pi Heater, also known as the warm product. This is very nice looking. Let's have a look at how they incorporated some of those other features into this new device. Here is the very cool lid. You can see your filament spool from both sides, top or rear of the machine. Very nice. The lid doesn't come off. You simply grab this K1 door type knob and lift open. It swings open and stays attached like this. This is the easiest to open and close of the three by far. There are no latches to unlock. It doesn't knock the machine over. It remains very stable when open very stable when closed, very stable when opening and closing, even with no filament inside. And you might be surprised how light this is. This is a very light box. That said, it does say on the box, 360 degree PTC hot air heating. Well, unlike the S2, which has a heating element at the top and a heating element at the bottom, this machine does not. It only has heating elements at the bottom. However, it does appear to have a series of fans and ducts to circulate that air around the device. And I suppose that's where they come up with their 360 degree heating. Is this less efficient, equal to, or better than the S2's true 360 degree heating elements? I don't know. We will have to take their word for it, put this to use and find out. However, you will see they also have two rollers. These are on bearings, they turn very smoothly. So when printing from the box, your filament spool should turn nice and freely inside the unit. A very simple but very neat little trick on this dehydrator is the filament exit. Here you can see the filament exit. And for those of you who are not printing from the box, this neat little built-in plug for sealing up the filament exit when using it solely for dehydrating filament. Here we have one, two, three vents to facilitate airflow within the device. One thing I do not see on this dehydrator is a compartment for a bag of silica beads. While this is not necessarily necessary, I find its omission disappointing as I wouldn't mind having that option to add a silica bag to it. That said, we are living in the age of the internet. We are 3D printers and I do expect somebody will mod this to in some way add silica packages. Let's drop a roll of filament in and go over how it works. Here is a roll of silk silver. We will open up the door. Notice how the machine didn't fall over. I'm already happy this thing has a great base. We will place our spool in filament this way, this way, 
right here. First off, let's have a look at the rollers. It does appear to roll smoothly. And let's pretend we're printing directly from the box. We will pop open that little seal and simply feed this through the hole. You can see how smoothly this works. That means your extruder will have no problem pulling this filament out of the box during printing. However, Creality has taken things a step further and provided you with a Bowden tube. You can insert this Bowden tube into that hole You will see how easily it went in. And then you can guide the filament wherever you want using this tube, cutting it to the length you desire. The power cord is your standard two prong. There is no external box, which is great. It simply plugs in right here on the bottom and there's an on off rocker switch. Zero for off, one for on. Yay binary. Go ahead and plug it in. With the machine plugged in and the rocker switch set to on, you will see the machine now has power as indicated by this touchscreen button. Go ahead and touch it to turn it on. Here we are greeted by this fancy screen. You will see the material says TPU. We are going to change that material by pressing the settings button. You will see material is highlighted. Press down until it switches to the material you want to print. You can see there are many options available right out of the gate. We are going to choose PLA. Everything is set for PLA. And we will go ahead and press the settings button. I have chosen six hours. Our temperature is set to 50. The current temperature is 25 and rising and the humidity inside the box is 40%. You can see the timer is ticking down and you can clearly hear the fans running. You may go ahead and print from the box while it's running or leave it closed up, let the cycle finish and then remove the filament and print from the filament directly. With the door open, I can easily feel the airflow and the heat coming from here and there is a vacuum coming from the back. So that is how it creates its circulation. Air intake, air output. Vacuum, intake sucking the towel in, and output blowing the towel up. There is an impressive amount of heat and a very strong airflow coming from that duct right there. I'm super happy with what I'm noticing. Here I am sitting next to my CR6 Max. You can see it feeding out the top, straight to the filament runout sensor into the extruder. And you can see how smoothly the filament comes out the spool. And how easy it is to set things up by touching the touch screen and then placing it back in the right direction. Notice how stable this box is. This was not the case with my previous setup, the Sunlu S2, which every time I opened it or tried to touch the screen, it would constantly arrest my case, fall over. The Creality dryer has a beat in the stability department, hands down. And there it is, the Creality Space Pie Filament Dryer. Despite its bizarre name, it does appear Creality has a competent filament dryer on their hands. I do feel advancements in the filament dryer market have been a little slow, and I welcome Creality's entrant into that market. Time will tell how well it works and how well it holds up. Should the Creality Space Pie dryer prove itself to work well and to hold up, it looks like Creality may have a winner on its hands that's worth your consideration. Since I know some people are going to ask, it does appear that the fans are somewhat loud. However, I can attest by feeling the airflow myself that they are also reasonably powerful, which to me can help justify that sound and make it a little bit more worth putting up with. 
you are on the 3D Rundown YouTube channel. I'm Greg Adventure, your instructor on 3DRundown.com, and checking out this really cool Space Age filament dryer. Sorry. Creality Space Pie filament dryer. The warm product was today's adventure. Should the space pie, should the space, what is a space pie? <laughs> you will see a knob right here which you can turn. You will see a knob right here which this is, this is a very shit as well. Nothing to see here. Everything is okay.